Hey guys, welcome back to Xamarin guys. So in this tutorial, we are going to play around with real APIs in our Xamarin forms application. So this is the endpoint and this is the body that I need to pass in that API. So this is the condition that my backend developer has said that I need to use that endpoint and then the JSON I need to post it. So before implementing any API, I just use Postman in order to verify whether that API is working or not. Postman is available for Windows as well as Mac machine. You can just download it from the best browser that you have in your system. So this is my endpoint. Replace it with your endpoint if you have. Now inside the body, I have JSON section. So this is the JSON that I need to pass in order to get a OK successful response. If you are not getting OK successful response over here, then I'll update my video's description below where I'll post a new endpoint and a username as well as password so that you will get a 200 successful OK in order to test your Xamarin Forms application. So this is what we'll get after we successfully log in within the application. So let's create a new Xamarin Forms application. Now we are good to go with testing real API inside our Xamarin Forms application. So click on next, create a new Xamarin Forms blank project. I'll click on create and it will take some time to load. I'll set my iOS project as my starting project and you can set your Android project too. So this is a basic application which gets started from main page. I'll just remove that line of code. I'll create three controls inside the same stack layout. One will be username entry field, another will be password field and the next one will be the login button. So whenever the user clicks on login button, then we are going to take username and password, serialize, then send it to the API endpoint as like our postman that we did and then we should get our OK successful output. So before that, let's run the application and check whether our application is working or not. Let my simulator load for some time. So we have two entry field. Now let me put placeholder as username and another placeholder as password. That's all. A margin of 20. We are done with our first UI. Now our next objective is to clicking on login button. It should go to dashboard page. So here I should navigate to a new page that is our dashboard page. The dashboard page is going to be a content page. I'll just rename it as dashboard page. So whenever our login button is clicked, it needs navigation page in order to navigate to a new page. So we need to define it as a navigation page and over here I'm using a sync await and a button click. You can use any framework in order to navigate between the pages. But in order to make this tutorial very short, I'm just using button click. It depends upon your requirement whether to use any framework or not. So this is my dashboard page. Well, I'll just put a level text. This is my dashboard page. And stack layout will wrap my label. That's all. Now let's run the application whether we are able to navigate to a new page whenever our login button is clicked or not. So whenever I click on login button, then I should navigate to a new dashboard page as per our requirement. Now our main objective is to introduce a new API between our login and dashboard that is our login api so before that we need to create a new folder named as services inside that folder let's create a class named as api services which will interact with our api application programming interface 
that means so this class will be used to interact with the api now before that let's create a model folder we know that we have login api to be integrated so let's create a new folder named as login so that we can just abstract out the convention now we should have login api request and another class named as login api response model class in order to send json content to the api and get the response back after deserializing with the help of login api response model we are all done with the request and response model classes so what is that request so this is the request that we are going to put as username and password. So we are going to serialize this model class and send it to the API from our mobile. So whenever the serialization happens, then we are going to get that JSON. Now this is the JSON that we will get after successful login. So in order to convert that json to csap you can use any json to csap converter so this is the json to csap converter that i am using you can use any json to csap converter it depends upon your interest so i'll just give that link in my video's description too so that you can just grab it out let me copy this line of code and then paste it inside my project so below login api response model now you can see over here login api response model is my root so i need to replace it with my root name so that we don't have any confusion later now our login response model is ready this is my login request model and this is my login response model which has been represented in json format now inside our api services this is the last service class file where we'll be working i'm going to paste a very simple line of code that is here we are going to create a new instance of the same api service classes so that we can grab all the methods that are defined within this api service class so before that let's embed our newtonsoft.json inside our Jamdin forms application so that we can serialize and deserialize all the contents that are coming from our API. So JSON serializer is defined inside our newtonsoft.json, HTTP client inside our system.net.http and the client will be initialized over here inside our API service constructor. Then same client is going to be added with the base address. So, you can see over here we have full api endpoint but i have divided it to half so that the next that is auth slash login slash custom will be used inside our calling methods so we'll be using that in the later part now it is defined inside our media headers so what is that calling method so this is my calling method where all the authentication work magic happens so task is defined inside our system that trading the task and i'll just discuss about this login response model where it will be used but before that you can see over here whenever our login button is clicked then we are going to send phone number and password with the help of this constructor so this phone number and the password will get all the strings to itself then we are going to attach our login request model with the username and the password let me copy that name that is login api request model and then paste it over here now we are going to create one object out of that login request model and then put those properties that is username and password with the phone number and the password that is coming from our button click so this phone number and password are going to be attached with the username and password of that specific login request model object now we have already created our object out of that login request model now we need to serialize in order to send it to the api so this is how we are going to serialize 
our login request model in order to send that information to the API as like what we have done using the postman. So JSON convert that serialize object will serialize our username and password in this way. So this is the format which will be gained after serialization of that model class. That's all. Now our same client is going to post the remaining part of the base address that we have already discussed before. Now the same client is going to post and then after getting a res successful response we are going to ensure it then with the help of this response.content.readAddStreamAsync who is going to get all the data back from the API itself then our next objective is to put login API response model in action that is this model class that we have generated so this is the response that we will get from the API now we need to put that inside the deserializer then we are going to send that same response to the calling method so this is the json content that we are going to send so preference.set is going to save the string that we have inside our authentication token so this is one way of storing strings that are coming from the api end so that we can use it in our future so inside my json content dot authentication token there is this string the whole string that will be saved inside the key named as auth token so this is the string that i will be calling so preference is defined inside our xamarin dot essentials that's all now whenever this method is called then we are going to send all the response to the calling method so how it's done this is by this way whenever user logs in then he is going to send username and password with the api service class that he has created and the instance that is defined inside that same class and we can just grab the method like this way and then send the username and password within that same constructor so this is the username whenever the user enters his name and the password from the entry field you can use mbvm way also in to send those information with that same way of calling the api we have to await it in order to grab the contents out of the returned value from the api service class out of that same method that is authenticate user async method here we will get our value if it is not null or this is just a string so we just need to check whether that string is null or empty as content dot authentication token if that is not null then we are just going to give a basic logic as it will go to the dashboard page if our string is not null then we are going to go to dashboard page or else we are going to display a alert that is display alert telling that something went wrong let's avoid that let me put some breakpoint and run the application if it is all good then we can successfully log in with the username and password that we have already have and we tried in our postman to now clicking on f5 then it will go do order all its authentication work then come over the next breakpoint over here that's all if you are encountering any error then there might be issue on clear text http on android side and app transport security on the ios side so this is https there is no issue with the https so let's integrate app transport security inside our jamdin forms ios if there is any issues only so this is a bonus to our sorting issue that gets encountered whenever you use your endpoint that is http endpoint so if you are using visual studio for windows right click on it and then just open it with some text editor you can just edit your info.plist within the visual studio itself but inside your visual studio for mac you have to go outside reveal it in the finder and then just text edit it 
now we are going to paste not this this line of code over here now we have successfully configured our app transport security for http request then for our android we just need to integrate clear text http traffic i think this might be removed in future from the Xamarin team itself and we don't need to add this but for now let's add that inside our properties let me go to the properties itself then assembly information over here now this line of code is going to remove all the http issues that we encounter within the application that's all now we are well and good to run our Xamarin Forms application integrating the real API that is this username and the password that's all for this tutorial now thank you guys thanks for watching keep in touch for next tutorials